managers for LZ. Monty approved. And we finally are going to pick some bands for game number two. Longju versus KD Gragas will be the first ban from Longju over against Score. After last game, you really can't blame them. And there's an Italy ban against Chaser this time. Italy becoming more and more of a staple red side ban as the meta shifts. And of course, Alistair and Braum, both top level support picks. And are we really wanting to ban those out anymore? There are enough supports. Bard, of course, another one that is quite powerful at the present time. And Twisted Fate banned once again by KT. Will they ban the Gangplank? That's going to be the next question because Flame had a very good game on GP. Could be. Could be. Corky also up for banning. Interesting to me that Longju does not want to first pick Callista, and there is the Zillion ban trying to shut down that composition. That is the key pick of that comp. So yeah. So we're gonna have to see something a little bit different from KT. I suppose they could run something similar, but without the Zillion, you really do lose a lot of the aggressive diving that we saw work so well for them in game number one. Also, you know Fly has a relatively small effective champion pool. Yeah. Lux, Lulu, Zillion. It's a Corky ban. So first pick over to Longju. They have a chance to grab that Gangplank for Flame. First picking the Gangplank would be perhaps a bit of a risk, but one they may be willing to take. They could also take Poppy here. True. If they don't take Poppy, KT will take it. And Poppy might be a little bit higher of a priority. Someday I had a pretty monster game on that. <laughs> He's had monster games all season on Poppy. He had that game where he killed everyone on the map in the first 10 minutes, <laughs> except for his lane opponent. That's so he was, killed their jungler, killed their mid laner, killed both of their uh, dual lane players. He was just absolutely everywhere. Probably want to take it away. And they are thinking about it. I'm guessing they probably will. Yep, there's the Poppy takeaway. And so then two picks over to KT. So what's it going to be? KT could decide to take away the Sivir here if they want to go with that pick. Could grab the Alistar as well. Elise. Okay. Trundle Elise, maybe. Trundle's such a good pick on red side because with the Nautilus still available, it shuts down a possible Nautilus pick pretty effectively. And it's good against Poppy. You can always flex it to support if you decide you want to later on in the draft. It will be the Trundle and the Elise this time. So yep. KT with two picks from the composition that Longju ran in the last game. They could theoretically take the entire composition still that Longju selected. That's definitely possible. Longju, though, with a, a lot more variance in terms of options they can go with. I mean, they've swapped out the entire roster except for Flynn. Coco, of course, has that famous Jace. He's got a little bit more of the long range option. So yeah, Zier, not bad. That's not one thing we hadn't mentioned. I have a feeling, of course, Coco is that amazing Azir player, but Azir doesn't work the same way as it did when Coco used to play it. Obviously, he used yeah. to be the engaged Azir player, probably or the best Azir player that I've seen. Pretty amazing on that particular pickup. But doesn't quite have that same durability when he engages anymore. So the way BDD playing it, holding on to that ultimate later rather than initiating with it has been, I think, the preferred way to play him since the nerfs. You don't think Coco would be willing to play it and then just adjust his style a little bit? Sure, we can see that. I'd love to see him play Azir again. He's a very fun Azir player to watch. And looks like we will see the Kindred. So the Azir definitely still an option. They could go Sivir Kindred or Lucian Kindred with an Azir and have a very strong front line and a lot of peel protection for 280 carries. Gangplank will be the selection alongside Lucian. Okay. GP Lucian. So I like what they're doing. They're saving the Trundle as a possible flex pick for last. We don't know if it's support. We don't know if it's going to be top lane with a mid lane Gangplank. And that's a very good draft from KT, depending on their final pick. I would assume, Doa, that it will be top GP mid Lulu with Chandra when you know that's already in the mid lane. And we could see the Velkos. Now, this is what we saw at IEM, which Velkos is that Faker cool. plays Velkos into Lissandra 
because range long range champions do very well against Lissandra. She has a hard time dealing with that. I'd love to see the Velkaz. Does fly cool. subscribe to the Faker School of Counterpicks? No. Lux is still good too. Yeah. Obviously, Lux kind of get a lot of role. harassment against Lissandra and CC her, and that is definitely more of a fly champion. Yep. And uh, Monty means it's a champion fly would play, not that it's just like a cool champion. <laughs> I used to play sure a lot of Lux. That. Lux is fun, dude. I used to play a lot of support Lux. Was support Lux fun? Yeah, man, when you build AP on her. Of course. Of course it's fun. So Lux will be the final pick for KT, so they do have that poke. They have that long range wave clear. Great siege, great 4 1 split in this game. Yep. KT have a lot of zone control. The Lux E, Gangplank Barrels, Trundle Pillar. So very much KT looking as a kiting composition here and a siege composition either with 5 or 4 1. Meanwhile, Longju, pretty standard team fighting composition right now. I would be worried about them losing their bottom lane, so we may see a lane swap coming in for Longju. Obviously, you have to be very concerned about the Ezreal Alistair lane against Braum Trundle. That's something that is difficult to deal with, even though Ezreal can do okay against Trundle because he can at least arcane shift to the other side of a Trundle pillar if he gets True. caught out. So rate the draft. How'd KT do? Uh, it's just about goals, Doa. You don't have to put a number on it. For a, a poke composition or a siege composition, they got a pretty good one. All right. Longju does have some answers, though. They've got some nice engage between Lissandra, Poppy, and Alistair. So if they get flanks off, certainly a, a team composition they could win with, especially since Coco is going to be going teleport in the mid lane, and Fly has to take cleanse. Yeah, so he won't have that same mobility. Dives could be coming in for Longju. It's just a matter of can they get Fury into that late game build. True enough, well, Longju's opportunity is slipping away. We'll see if they can tie it up right here. Everybody wants to rule the world. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. KT Rolster. versus Longju KT, hoping to secure their third place spot in the league right now with a 2-0 over Longju Gaming, whereas Longju, you know, again, they're down a game, but if they can tie it up, if they can win that next game, they can actually tie themselves match score-wise at seven and five with KT. But after game one, it looks like things might be a bit tough, but then again, it's pretty much a new roster. So we'll see. We will see. KT looks like they're going back to their picks early on in this season that proved more successful. They mixed it up a bit, tried to play some new compositions against Janera. It was not effective whatsoever. It was quite poor. And now KT, we see them. Zillion Poppy won a lot of games early in the season on that. This time, they're going back to Lux Lucian. Obviously, a lot of synergy there, because if you catch somebody with a Lux Q, uh, the Lucian will just use the culling, and you can basically just kill somebody instantly between those two champions if you end up hitting a binding. Uh, that's a very nice synergy they've got going on right there. Longju has to be so careful about this. Yeah, oh. they're coming up with the Chani. They're trying to get that small Krug, but oh, oh it goes over to Arrow. It. Yeah, they may have been better sloppy, off just letting that go. Sloppy from Longju. You could check that brush yeah. either with a ward uh, that they didn't have, it's it's true, they didn't have a ward right there, or with an Ezreal Q. And you have to assume that they're still going to be chilling there if they're trying to disrupt you early on. And we're going to get standard lane, so this should be great for, uh, for KT. Gangplank obviously does very well against some of these melee top laners because they can't really deny him from farming early, and he can trade very efficiently with his passive. He doesn't have to use his parlay to proc his passive, he can just walk up and slice you with his cutlass. Ouch. That sounds painful. It is painful, Dylan. I wouldn't want to get sliced with a cutlass. You say that like you've got experience. Yeah, you I can show you later if you want. A former life <laughs> as a, a salty dog on the high seas. <laughs> That's right. That's me, Dylan. Let's see. A pirate at heart. <laughs> a pirate at heart. Monte Cristo 2016. Chani's. Oh my. Wow, this is he so got both bad. Of them. So. Achani actually takes about half the experience from that camp by stealing those <laughs> small bramble backs, and they already had an experience advantage in the bottom lane. 
So not only did Arrow get the solo experience there for a little bit, but Hachani managed to make up for it in that bottom side. So they take the small Krug, hit level two first, really start bullying them. Fury doing a good job of farming for now, but the control is there for KT Rolster. And top lane going in favor of KT also. At Longju, I mean, they're just not playing well in the early game, which is surprising because this is the number two team in the league when it comes to that gold difference at 15 minutes. Yeah. They're the ones who usually have that better early game, but not at the moment. Someday in a little bit of trouble. Chaser coming in for a lot of damage. Someday not wanting to burn that flash. We'll see if he does. He's getting low. Chaser, though, not willing to go into the turret. That was close, but Someday did a good job knowing his limits. Didn't need to use that summoner. Bold. I'm actually really surprised he didn't use that summoner spell, yeah, but he, he gets away with it. Yep. I would have used it right there. Well, I think... That's the reason why we're here and they're in the booth. Well, one of many reasons, really. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it is more than just that reason. They can speak Korean. That's really the main one. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd totally be in there. A flying Coco just well, what I understand from, in the mid lane. From LOL Esports, though, is if you can shot call in English, it really does help your, help your <laughs> ability to play League of Legends. That's what I've heard. I might even make top 20. Who knows? <laughs> Fury takes a good amount of damage from the Lucian passive. Well, now he's starting to lose CS. And yeah. I wonder how long Zhu is going to dig themselves out of this hole. Because once the siege comes in and these item thresholds are hit, they've got this. They have to deal with this gangplank in the late game. Fortunately, KT is not going to be too tanky. So they may just be able to explode someone with Lissandra, Kindred, and Ezreal. But they, uh, they're they going to have a hard time as long as KT wards properly and starts setting up these sieges. They don't have, besides a good flank, but with, of course, the amount of disengage that KT has, zone control, it'll be difficult. Should be fun to watch the mid game here and see who gets the better of it. I like both team compositions. It's just about the laning phase here where Longju has picked into basically three losing matchups, and that makes it hard. That yeah, certainly does. Well, they, they picked into three losing matchups with a jungler who will, is going to build Devourer and want to farm. So Chaser is not actually going to be too effective at ganking the lanes. And Score will have a lot more opportunities with the crowd control from Elise. He's got kill pressure, especially in the mid lane the Lux following up on any kind of cocoon. Well, coming into this one, based on the previous matches from these two teams, I got to say, I didn't expect the uh, possibility of a 2-0. I really thought we were going to go to game three with yeah, this one. Yeah, me too. But, and I mean, this game's obviously still very new. We're only six minutes in, but uh, KT at least have put themselves in a position to get that 2-0, which is a big thing, especially after losing, you know, 0-2 to Jin Air. They, they really do need a win like this. Yeah, it's been it's been a weird ride for KT. Yeah. Especially that last best of three they played against Janeiro was so strange from a drafting perspective. Right. Yeah, Flame just harassing someday a little bit. The nice thing is that even though they don't take TP in the mid lane, at least they still have the. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Bye. <laughs> Denies a couple CS, buys some time there to go back. Oops. Missed a couple CS there someday. Wah, wah. Now Flame gets time to take out the Pink Warden River, too. And uh, probably so will. KT can at least answer ganks with the GP ultimate, so they should be pretty safe. And as we see Chaser just work up that Devourer. He's actually fallen behind in farm somehow to score. That is a bit concerning. Wow, yeah. I mean, for a farm-centric jungle plan. He did plan. gank top, so Score has been hard farming that entire time. No real ganks from him yet. I mean, like you said, too, we're, excuse me. Like you said, too, we're probably not going to see a lot of ganks coming out of Chaser in the first place. But if they do, GP has his Galleon parked just offshore. Offshore? Sure. Where is it? I see like a mountain in the background. I don't know. Maybe, like like we talked about before, maybe it's a space ship. <laughs> it's just up He's in the air. He's a space pirate? Yeah, or at least That's an awesome. air pirate, you know? A flame. Starting things off against Someday. Here comes Chaser coming in for the gank. Someday Score. could be in a lot of trouble. 
Doesn't have his ult right now. Score with the cocoon oh, on the chaser. The Doesn't cocoon. work. Ah, he did barely miss it. There's first blood going over to chaser at Longju. Coco does not come over the wall. Score escapes. And it's things like that that Longju really need to turn this game around. No hit on the crowd control there. Probably wouldn't have made a difference anyway, but nice early roam from Coco. So first blood goes over and they gank the pirate. They make it successful. They have the damage to push it through and someday just a little too pushed up, but he has his TP. It's not gonna be the end of the world, but this is a nice timing now for Longchu to start to punish some of the overextensions in the bottom side because there is no GP ult and they do have teleport up on Lissandra. Yeah. And ult. Oh, Culling use pure mana just body block most of that. Shani taking a bit of damage, not needing to use his ult or anything. Now, somebody needs to be careful because here comes Chaser again. Someday went down for that ward, still has his flash. Funny enough, trying to get in position to oh. use it, he failed the flash. And there's another kill going over to Chaser. Chaser, uh, he's, he's like, like yeah, he missed failed. his flash. <laughs> That's a hard wall to flash. It is, to be but fair. it did get easier when they changed how flash works over yeah, walls. A little bit easier. It's still a hard wall to get over. Wow, someday just going for that ward and dying again, and this is pretty disastrous. Now Chaser is going to be farming up that Devourer even faster. Score's going to respond with some cross-map plays. We'll take away a red buff, so at least it gets something, but GP has been seriously slowed down. Yep. I mean, you can look at the team comps, you can look in the lanes, but you know, if you have things like that happen that probably shouldn't be happening, that can certainly turn the game around. Uh, some d sometimes Someday does have these risky early games where he tries for all-ins and loses, or... Whoa, flash, pulverize, Achani, Mac to... Uh, ma uh, whatever, knock back under turret. Use that ult to try to save life. Fury actually gets really low. Score comes in for the execute. Doesn't go, quite go. get it. Kindred ult saves the life. Achani and Arrow re-engaging on the fight right now. Fly comes in. Two kills for Kindred just like that, though. Fly missed his Q. Man, Otherwise, another. he may have been able to knock that one down. Whoa. Doesn't hit. That was close. Two shot for Final Raj. spark, and that's not going to hit anything. We'll clear out the minion wave. But yeah. two kills now over to Longju as they're just mechanically misplaying these lanes. He tried to anticipate they would kite back, but instead everybody just went for it. So Fly there, not doing a great job. And the Elise just a little bit late. They called that fight a little bit too early there. Now a very significant lead for Longju. 1,500 gold here at about 11 minutes. Yeah, just given away by Kanks. Not something you would expect from a Kindred, but... Flame with the fast Sunfire Cape as a result of his farm lead. and. The fact that he didn't get pick up those two assists, and now somebody's going to have a lot of more trouble in this lane. Yeah. Flame knows he can be aggressive too, with so many members dead. Someday under the turret, Flame goes for the ultimate, goes for the kill. Someday just a little bit of health, but Flame flashes for the solo kill. Uh oh, yeah, and dead. he's not going to make it out of there. Cocoon, who gets it? You give it over to Chani. No, score. The turret. <laughs> but Chani didn't want to steal it. I'm disappointed, man. The turret gets it, Doa. No, dude. In the end, it was definitely. The spider. Well, the spider got the donation, but the turret was the real hero there. It's true. So this is going to be troublesome for KT Rolster. They needed to start getting advantages and setting up when they start handing kills over to the blue build Ezreal. It does allow Longju to really get rolling. So their their uh, ramping top laner for KT has been slowed down. They haven't gotten advantages in the other lanes. Fly hasn't been there on the roam as fast as Coco has been. Now KT going to have to win themselves a victory out of some sieges, but more ganks in the top side. Coco is back for for vengeance. Someday has just been picked on so much, and now he's in even more trouble again. No flash, no summoners to use. Gets Lissandra ulted, gets killed. Chaser taking a lot of turret damage, but another easy gank yes. for Longju. It is a free dragon, though, for KT. And at least Score is playing the cross-map objectives well, so they're getting something out of these ganks. And Someday isn't really... Oh, actually, he got his gold reset, never mind. Looks like he got that assist on the last kill. But the objectives here, 
Chaser looking in the enemy jungle for a red buff. He will get his red buff revenge, and Score and Hachani now want to dive on this bottom side, but pure is level six. That is not going to work. Yeah, it'd be kind of tough to kill that Alistar. Well, yeah. And just the thought of him underneath the turret in a three-man dive against two is not very feasible. Yeah. So they're going to look at mid instead. Yeah, nice turret to slow nice. down. Coco, good Q. They caught him that time. Coco trying to get out, but I don't think there's any way he can do it. Nope. There's a kill for KT. So KT Rolster striking back. Finally landing some of those skill shots. That has been KT's undoing this game is these mechanical outplays or misplays in the skirmishes, and they're going to get a top turret though, Longju, and that's going to make it pretty difficult for KT just to set up their siege, at least in the top side. See if Gangplank can slowly get himself back into this game. He has been very delayed when it comes to his Trinity Force, however. I suppose they've got time. I mean, both of these, it seems like both of these compositions can go into the late game, gain strength. Certainly they can, but Longju really with a nice advantage, and they're not going to be slouching in the late game either. Uh, Longju really is spending a lot of time in KT's jungle too, getting a lot of good vision in, especially on that top side. And that's uh, really put the pressure on to score as well. Well, Chaser's the kind of jungler, though. We've seen this time and time again from him. He's a shutdown jungler. He will pick one lane and then just eliminate that lane from the game. He <laughs> he likes to pile on the punishment on one specific player, usually, and then just repeatedly gank that game lane over and over and over again. That's always been his style of jungling. Some players like to say, okay, well, I got this lane at advantage. Most junglers will say, I got this lane at advantage. Now we're going to try and get maybe get this lane at advantage. For example, you take someday's teleport or his ultimate, and then you gank bottom lane and Flame will TP down there and try and snowball that lead across the map. No. Chaser will just remove one player from the game for an extended period of time and just concentrate the punishment there and try and get, in this case, Flame ahead. So it's a different style of jungling than what a lot of other people prefer, but it's always worked and he's been a great jungler. If I had to pick somebody to remove from the game for KT, I think I'd pick someday also. At the GP, yeah, nice choice. Yeah. Eliminate that threat for a very long time. Some days in a bit of trouble now. He hasn't fallen as far behind in CS as you think somebody would in a situation where they've died four times already in the game, but he's, uh, he's managed to keep up okay. It's hard to keep a someday down. True. It's true, man. All right. Time to move out of vision. If you're wondering where everybody is, there's the pillar slowing him down. Cocoon. Wow. Score has not been great with Just the cocoons right now. Just a little bit off every yeah. single time. Well, fly too. I mean, we already talked about this a little bit, but KT. You know, missing some of those very important skill shots. That may not have been a kill on Pure, but they might have been able to get the ultimate out at least. It would have been nice. Would make sure that they would be less vulnerable to dives. They are just trying to set up in the bottom side of the river. What KT want to do right now is pressure the mid and bottom lanes while GP freezes in top and tries to get back in the game when it comes to CS. And they have advantages in the mid and top lane when it comes to farm. So why not take those and the pressure edge they oh, have. Oh, there we uh -oh. go. Pure flashing over the wall into score. Nice with Lissandra ultimate, and that's another easy pick for Longju. Their coordination with these uh, ganks has been very, very good this game. It's been fun to see the synergy between Coco and Chaser develop because it really was lacking at the start of this season, but now it is definitely looking like it is much more on point in the past few weeks. Yeah, definitely. Score, feeling the pressure. And this is one fed Kindred. And Kindred, one of those junglers that actually can do things with a big lead like we're seeing. And now all that vision that KT placed in the river is useless, and they're going to lose a turret. So this is exactly the opposite of what they were trying to set up for just because of that one pick in the river. Longju regains control of the bottom side, is going to take the tower, and this siege comp is losing force from KT as Longju starts to take every advantage. Flame even with that sheen now. Yeah, siege comp needs to be kind of moving forward all game yep. long, and when it starts to move backwards, it starts to 
not really be able to do much. Especially if you get deep wards in and you can constantly threaten double teleport flanks on them, makes it a risky endeavor to walk up after you've lost a turret in that lane. There are just so many ways for the enemy to get behind you. As I'm sure we'll see later in the game. Rift Scuttler taken by uh, KT. So at least they've got a little bit of vision in the top river. Yeah, Coco's Rones have at least been punished. He has a, a large number of kills right now, yet he is still struggling at keeping that turret up in the mid lane, and that's really the key right now. Can KT get back into this? If they can take the outer ring of turrets, they can equalize the gold and still have a shot. Yeah. But Longju, their mission now should just be acquiring deep wards in the bottom side jungle, pushing up the bottom lane, warding that out, and then applying pressure in mid as best they can. That's right, and kind of setting up for something similar. Nope, he's going to go after the pink ward instead. I was wondering if we are going to see KT try to gank here. Longju manages to chase him off for the moment. Dragon is back. And it looks like Chaser has started it. Yep, he has. Okay. So he'll try to do this dragon. He may have to get out of there, though. KT coming down. They really want to get their second dragon. Fury has to arcane shift away after the Trundle Pillar comes in. Dragon low. And wow, Scorge just smites it away. Just walks up and takes it. Yeah, two smites used right there, but Chaser just a little bit late. Yeah, I mean, uh, that couldn't have really worked out any better for KT. And that's the kind of thing they need to stay in this game. Actually, Chaser may have, may have smote a champion right there with his challenging smite. I didn't actually catch that. So it was a little bit later, but it's hard to outsmite in the least just because she has that execute damage in spider form. Right. Coordinate those abilities. She just has, simply has more burst, but he was not close enough to actually get that execute off. Score just straight up outsmiting, and that's really great, KT. Sieging. That second dragon is pretty nice to have for this particular composition. Well, now KT just has to push ahead in these lanes to actually start sieging. That's the tricky part. That's the part that they've had issues with so far this game. Yeah, they're really scared. Now the blue buff Ezreal has a lot of free time to farm in the bottom side. There aren't enough wards for Arrow just to try and contest that wave whatsoever especially because his support and jungle are in the top side trying to prote protect Gangplank and make sure someday can get farm. He's still, as we can see right now, about 800 gold behind. Score just setting up that blue buff. And he's just gonna take it, stealing the blue away. Score's made some mistakes this game mechanically and also getting caught out in the river, but for the most part, he's been doing a good job of responding to enemy kills with at least something every time, taking away the blue buff, trying to deny. Even though he hasn't had more successful ganks than what we've seen from Chaser. True. KT's gonna try to make a plan to Coco here. Cocoon does connect, but with Fury there, everybody else a little bit too close to all that Ezreal damage. But they so want to poke out the Lissandra out. and try and yeah. clear out wards and then push up into this mid lane. They have that ranged jungler. Fury now has to be there in mid. And where is Lucian going to be assigned? Or again, all by himself. He has to be so careful. His Kindred's very strong. Teleport coming in from Longju as well. Coco joins the party. He's going to go in on the score. Uses his ult right away. Trisha Barrage comes through and Fury takes the kill on the score. KT on the run. GP ult used. Doesn't oh, do a Fury. whole lot. Yeah, Fury has to get out of that one. Dangerous moment for the Kindred, but we'll be okay. And those are the kind of plays you want to make. If you are Longju, you have to start using your TPs to catch them out. They are so squishy. And they pick up another kill on the score. Isolate him in the jungle. Now Chaser can go ahead and take away the blue buff, take away the wolves, and start to starve score out. Crash caught Chaser as he was coming into the booth. He just looks him in the eye and goes, I want you to make him suffer. <laughs> Chaser's like, I will. 4-0-3, great score on this Kindred. So far, so good for Chaser. He's already got his Devourer already fully stacked. That is huge. Wow. Quick Devourer because he has been so successful in this game to this juncture. 
has that mob Malmordius as well. For some more danger and a little bit of safety against the magic damage. Wow, Fury with a fast QSS. Doesn't want to be caught out by the Light Binding. Had an effective use of that item in the last fight to turn the table and actually he forced Fly's Flash by and using the QS. Oh, okay. gang, Flame coming in. Knocks Fly against the wall. There's the Poppy ultimate as well. Fly trying to get back under turret. Burns his ultimate. So alive. low health. Trying to get away, but can't make it. Chaser with another kill. And now Longju, they're going to take down this mid lane turret. I Coco saw there threatening from Coco. To come in. Yeah, that's right. Flame had a really good engage there, committing to the flash to yep. pin Fly to the wall, knowing that there wasn't a flash available. He did. Uh, Fly did, of course, use his cleanse to get out of that, but still at that low range, difficult to get everybody off you. And that'll be another kill, 9-2 to two now in favor of Longju. Man, Chaser's just having a great game on this Kindred. 5-0-3. It did come from mistakes that Someday made, though. Someday made it very easy for him to have a good game by overextending and dying a couple times. But ever since then, it's been dominant from Chaser. And that Kindred is terrifying at the moment. And how do you deal with this Kindred? You can't really kill it because he has the Moth Malmordius and the long range coming in from Lux won't be doing that much damage. And also, he's got the Lamb's Respite. And KT doesn't doesn't really have an answer to that. If they try and pick him off with the Culling and Final Spark combo, he's just not going to die. Then you don't have any other ways to kill him. You know, life steal his way back up. Certainly seems that way. KT is rapidly running out of options. They have already run out of options. Haven't gotten a turret yet in this game. The only thing that they can really do is try and take five dragons, but trying to take that as a poke composition while Longju has superior team fighting is really, really hard. Longju would have to make quite a few mistakes. Well, Monty, stranger things have happened in not just this league, but around the world. Yeah, stranger things, that's, that's true. We've seen some epic throws. Flame knocking away. His opponent trying to get back to base. Achani and Someday come in. I don't know if Flame's going to be able to make it out of this one. Certainly doesn't look like it. There's another barrel. Flame turning around gives the kill over to Someday. Coco having to E his way, or Flash rather, his way out of whatever happened down in bot lane. Looks like they were going after Fly maybe? Yeah, they were going after uh, Arrow and they forced Arrow's Flash, but they didn't actually get the turret. And so KT's looking like they trying to get this turret up at the top side. A dragon will go over, but as long as you can get a kill and a turret for that dragon, that's going to be a major win for them when it comes to objective trading because they just need gold to get back into this game. And that puts them under 2K now. Still going to be really hard, but that's a step in the right direction. Oh, someday. Yeah, he may have gone a little bit too far here. Coco uses ult right away. Someday taking a lot of that AP uh -oh, damage. Oh, Trundle's here. Here comes Achani. Coco now the one in trouble. Burns the Zonias. Let's see if anyone can get there in time to save him. Nope. Wow, the rest of his team just wasn't there yeah. with the oranges. He cleanses out of the ultimate. Trundle making it there just a shade quicker than Kindred and Alistair. Well, it's picks so, like that that KT really need. Uh, yeah, especially because they got the bottom tier one, and now we're just about even in gold. So Longju making some crucial errors, over committing to a dive, not finding the kills. And then we see KT with three members of the top side eliminating Flame, and then Coco deciding to go top side to kill GP again, but instead they leave the bottom turret defenseless. So the dust settles. It's two kills for KT and two turrets in exchange for a dragon. Great trade for KT Rollster. And now they can just group up mid. So things could not have gone better, really. Well, now they have to keep them going better. You know, that's the tricky part. They brought the game back to relatively even status. They Almost have. Almost dead even with gold, and that was after being down by about 3 or 4k. If I remember right. Yeah, they were down by 4k. Big, yeah, it was a big deficit to overcome, but they did it. It was a good start. Great start for them. Still have to keep it moving, though. And this blue Ezreal from Fury is online. Has the Muramana, has the Iceborne Gauntlet QSS, and now working into a Lord Dominic's regard. Not sure exactly if he needs that item right now. I would think that huh. 
perhaps the sustain from Blade against the burst that KT had would be a little bit better. There's actually not very much armor on the side of KT other than score. I'm just not sure who Lord Dominic is and why he's sending his regards with a crossbow. Well, uh, he's he's not very neighborly, Doa. I guess so, so that's how he sends his regards. Maybe he writes a nice little note and then shoots it over to you. Maybe, maybe they have like a little like hay bale or something like that next to the <laughs> castle. You know, they're like uh, he shoots it over and they get a message like, "Oh, the lights are on in the attic." Like, "Oh, thanks, I would have noticed that. Thank you, Lord Dominic." And he's like, "Oh, also, regards. <laughs> have a good day. Have." Nice time. Yours truly, love always, Lord Dominic. I bet that's it. Yep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Like that Lord Dominic. Such a such a considerate neighbor sending his regards. Remember when he brought that delicious fruit cake over? He shot it with a crossbow. <laughs> Sorry, he shot it right over with a crossbow. <laughs> Tied it to a little package and <laughs> shot that fruit. The fruitcakes can survive anything, so that doesn't surprise me. That Lord Dominic, what a guy. Would you eat a fruitcake shot by a crossbow? Uh, I, we live pretty close to each other, though. I can actually shoot We a, could shoot crossbow fruitcakes <laughs> to each other. This could happen. Yeah. There is line of sight. Our, now, our, whether that's safe. <laughs> our houses are within crossbow <laughs> distance, aren't they? <laughs> I've never thought of it like that before, but... You better watch yourself while you're sleeping. Hey, man, <laughs> I have the high ground, remember? <laughs> we know what happens apparently in the Star Wars universe when someone has the high ground. It's just impossible to win. That's, that's right, unless you're talking about the first prequel, in which case then uh, you can win from hanging off the edge of a bottomless pit. Then the high ground didn't matter too much, did it, Darth Maul? <laughs> I guess uh, maybe <laughs> Qui-Gon and Darth Maul were just really bad at lightsabers. Well, I like the theory where Qui-Gon had that experience. He's like, I must train Anakin just in case that he can never beat me from the low ground. Just in case something like this happens, I don't want to lose the fight. So that's why at the end he's like, it's no use Anakin, I have the high ground because he trained Anakin to never be able to attack properly from the low ground. Anakin was great otherwise, but from the low ground, just was never trained properly by Obi-Wan. So the failsafe ended up uh, coming in handy. It's true. He, Darth Vader yeah. even dies on the low ground. He, like, picks up the Emperor and he's underneath him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and because of that, he was uh, electrocuted the rest of the way, I guess. Yeah. So there you go. It all makes sense. The prequels are val <laughs> validated now. <laughs> yep. But basically, going back to our earlier point, we could totally shoot crossbows at each other from our houses. Full circle, see? That's how it is. <laughs> Just wrapping that one up? Yep, that's right. As long as you tried to set up a little bit of a tricky play there, but KT wasn't having it. KT actually with a tiny gold lead now. Well, they've managed to farm someday back into relevance. Yeah. He actually has that farm advantage because he did have the freeze, and then they were able to push it all the way down by killing Flame. And the farm advantages in the mid and bottom lane remain. Five extra kills and an extra turret, but KT starting to come back with this one, especially with the extra gold from the parlay on GP. Well, someday is getting some decent gold release. Has the Infinity Edge done, has the Trinity Force done. Been wreathing Essence for a long time, too. Now he's starting he's to win this. Flame, yeah. Starting to win this matchup now, which is of concern to Longju, as the 4-1 split push will become more of a threat here in the late game. To have somebody who has an answer. Longju going for their second dragon. But dragon really isn't a huge priority right now. I mean, it's getting to the point where we're probably not going to see five dragons from either team. Not with two and two at 32 minutes. That yeah. would be incredibly unlikely. You'd be looking at minimum 50 minute fifth dragon if one team continues to get the rest of the stacks. Exactly. So it, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. KT is perfectly fine letting that one go and just kind of continuing to power up. And wait, they can kite. Yep. Their composition is efficient at kiting. You can't spell kite without KT. That's very true, though. You can't spell kite without KT. Yep. Blue buff going to go over to fly there. 
Well, I thought I saw score taken, but I think that must have been an optical illusion. It was. Fly got it after all. Oh, Chaser slowed down. He might be in a little bit of trouble. No, KT not wanting to commit. He has Maw and Sterex. He can play aggressively like that. He has I the suppose. HP and defensive stats, too. How do you hold a Maw Memordius with Sterex Gage, though? Seems like it'd be kind of tough. You wear it on your other hand. How do you hold a bow, though? Draw a bow with Sterex Gage. I mean, he's already holding a knife. And, uh, or a saber, I'm sorry, a skirmisher's saber. And a sword. And he's got that glove. He's also got a dirk as well. Oh, might have a bit of a fight from KT. Fury forced to arcane shift away. Chaser hopping over the wall. Angers the Baron. We didn't even see Harry this game, did we? I don't think we did. No, Harry was just ignored the entire time. As oh, he should be. Poor Harry. Just ignore him. The best way for the Rift Herald. Yep. He is ignored frequently in standard lanes, though. Nobody wants to give Harry Rift the time of day. Would you? I guess not. If he asked you what time it was, you'd say, it's 20 <laughs> minutes. Go away. I feel, like, I feel like, check your own cell phone, Harry. Come on. You have a giant eye staring at the sun. Can't you tell? No kidding. Yeah, seriously. Oomba. He should be, he's like, I never learned how to do that. I'm like, Harry, please. Well, he was in the void. You can't blame him. Maybe. There's probably no sun in the void. That's true. There's probably no it nothing. Always, in, it, there's probably no nothing in the <laughs> void, really. I mean, it is called the void. How do you think they find people in the void? Are they just like floating around in nothingness? I don't know. What happens over there? They shouldn't be in there to, to begin with because the void, by definition, should have nothing in it, right? But it sounds like there's actually a lot of stuff in this void. Wow, Pure takes a lot of damage from that Lux combo. I think we need to rename the void. I think we need to call it uh, the the, the, uh, full? the almost empty, <laughs> the uh, the void ish. I think we that's pretty much true of reality though, Doa. We could pretty much call the universe the almost empty as far as things go. Well, I don't know. There's a lot of particles and stuff. No, it's around. mostly empty. Yeah. It's mostly nothing. I suppose. Our atmosphere is different though. And, uh, yeah, I'm talking about the universe, not really the universe. <laughs> Also, some kind of you know matter we haven't discovered yet that fills the universe. Stay cool with science, Stella. You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> okay. You never know. I don't think that uh, people 50 years ago thought that there'd be a job where you talk about a competition played on a screen in front of you. Yeah, I think you can guess that one. You think so? I don't think so. Most people. Well, Longju's still putting the pressure on in this game. But they are down in goal. Do you think that's just because of Gangplank, for the most part? Well, Gangplank has 60 more CS and is Gangplank. I think so. So then. that is yeah. a lot of extra money. There you go. I thought I'd throw an easy one at you for a change. <laughs> Be a lot of hard questions to analyze. Thought I'd give you something simple once Thanks. in a while. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Just give me the old softball. Yep. <laughs> just a fluff piece, you know. You're just analyzing for the cameras anyway. That's I am. <laughs> well, we've reached a bit of a lull in the action. KT's just going to keep farming until. Yeah, they don't have any reason to. Well, you really does anything. something. There's. Yeah. As long as they have vision over Dragon, they can just continue playing cautiously. They don't have very much engage unless they manage to land a cocoon. So they pretty much just want to wait for Longju to make an engage and make a mistake. Otherwise, they will be happy scaling here to six items. I doubt they even know they have a gold lead right now because they are five kills down and one turret down. I mean, yeah, it definitely doesn't feel like that if you're on the KT side. You've been on the defense for so long. Teleport coming in from behind, though. Longju trying to flank with Flame. Flame throws arrow against wall. Arrow, cleanse, flash away from it. TP coming in for KT on the turret as well. Nice damage. Fly hits two at the ultimate. There's a GP out. Longju has to disengage through it. That's not ideal. KT chasing now. How far are they going to go with this one? They force the flash out of pure. Here has to use both of his summoners, so Longju goes for the engage, and 
Honestly, KT seemed to turn that one around pretty easily. They are very good at kiting with this composition, Doha. Oh, yeah. They have the QSS onto Arrow, so that initial engagement is not going to be very effective. Longju couldn't actually follow up on the Poppy stun with anything else, like a Lissandra ultimate, which didn't even end up being used right there. And KT kites it out, and we see the rather limited nature of both of these compositions. Longju has to expend some of these TPs if they want to engage on KT. And even then, the kiting is very good. But KT, they try for a counter engage, but they can't. They can't do it. They have no CC, really. If they don't land a long range cocoon or a light binding, it oh just boy. won't work. And here we go. I think this is a bad idea for Longju. Seems like an aggressive move to go for this Baron right now. They're going to disengage from it right away. Can't blame them. That was. Giving it the old college try I here. I guess so. Might as well, but they have one TP. So now they can try and use their teleport advantage with Lissandra. However, she is still not going to do well in a split push lane against GP. Dragon's they, up too. Yeah, they have to go clear this out. And it looks like the turret in the top side, the waves crashed in a manner, which the turret will reverse this wave automatically without taking damage, which is quite fortunate for KT. They do not have to send someone into the top lane at the moment. Yeah. And there's dragon number three for KT. May not count for a whole lot right now, but it is something. It's nice to get. Wow, Flame. Goodbye. Pretty uh, deep in the enemy jungle there. Has no trouble popping Lux out of there, though. Wow, they really want that red buff. Who gets it? I think Score got it. I think Score smote it. Pretty sure Score uh, smited it away. It oh, was I can't see that. He Invisible ward. It's in there. Oh, oh wow. I guess so. Fury comes in for a lot of damage on the fly. Score caught completely. They got that red buff. There's a kill for Lissandra. Fly in a lot of trouble. Here comes Achani. Can't save his AD carry, though. Coco comes in for the W lockup, and Longju just going to back they away. They thought there was no ward in that brush because yep. it was just on the other side of the terrain, the pink ward, and they get caught out. So nice play there yeah. from Longju. Chaser now going to come from the flank, and they are going to get a tier two. Wow, just like that. Things turning right back around. Now, can they get Longju's Baron favor. off of this? When they see Arrow bot lane, they're definitely going to try. Oh. I think they can. Nope, they're, they haven't seen Arrow. They have not seen Arrow, but they're still going to try anyway. They're going for it. They know they'll see Arrow when he comes to respond for this. Arrow's not going to respond. And they may just give this Baron right over to Longju. Yeah, no attempt here to actually go for the Baron, and they're going to give it up, so. <laughs> Longju finds an opening, they find a good engage. And that is so heartbreaking for KT, thinking that it was safe. It was a bit cocky to try and recall right there, even without that information. Fury lands his last Mystic shot to finish him off, even through the Lux shield. Arrow pushes out those waves. And they still have a lot of wave clear here for KT if they want to defend against this. Set up the GP barrels and everything like that. That's a lot of money there for someday. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. And he's getting pretty close to uh, hitting the Flame Horizon on Flame. Which is surprising considering how this game started with him getting killed. But they have yeah. done a great job of just funneling that farm in. And Longju was just pushing waves into KT's Tier 2s for a long time and simply allowing them to get CS leads. 3,000 more gold for someday than Flame. And Longju needed to play more decisively. Now, can they save this Tier 2? Are they going to give it up? They have I don't know. the range wave, but they should be able to defend this. Nice shot onto Fury. I can't admit, he's still being annoying, though. Arrow comes up, able to take it out. They have a static shiv onto Arrow. They have that range of Lux. They have GP barrels, so a lot of tools left over, even with this Baron buff to carve on through the waves. Coco's still pushing that top lane up there. Interesting mortal reminder onto Arrow. Oh, yeah. I must be just trying to stop the self-healing from Kindred and Ezreal. Oh, Flame knocks his opponent away, no problem there. Oh, nice hit with Fly. That was a Q, but didn't need the snare, just needed the damage. Well, that Baron Siege is now over. They're going to get so. two turrets with it, though, as Fury has a chance to get the last hit. They're going to try and kill Arrow. Yeah, Arrow takes about half his health and damage before backing off GPL. Yuzo Fury locked up with a cocoon. He's in trouble now, tries to go for a kill, doesn't get it. Pure on his own, 1v4. And you can't imagine he's going to survive, even with that Alistar ultimate flashes over the wall. Quick chase by score, and Luxalt for the near finisher. Looks like Arrow's going to get it in the end. 
Meanwhile, Coco just continuing to push up that top lane a little bit. And but, now uh, KT's going to respond with some yeah. turret pressure of their own. Long, long death timers. Three members going down off of misplays from Long Zhu. That's pretty devastating. Only Coco and Chaser left at the moment. Flame's going to be the first up in about 20 seconds, but this tier two at least is going to go down in favor of KT. They might be able to just grab an inhibitor off of this too. I think they're we'll going to get one, Doha. We'll see Coco. if Coco and Chaser want to go in, but the wave clear just isn't there. They can't really do anything about this minion wave. That's going to be an inhibitor, actually. Definitely will. Flame is back up right now, but not in time to stop the mid-inhibitor from going down. It's been a back-and-forth game, but advantage KT for the moment. Well, Flame just died so fast right there in the mid lane, and this, they want to get oh, Fury, that dash forward there with his E really cost him because then he was yeah. in cocoon range over the wall. He gets targeted out by the GP ultimate. Really big mistake. All he had to do was auto that turret once and walk away, not using his essence flux to try and do some extra damage. He wasn't paying attention to where KT was on the map and if they could follow up on that major error. And you can't make mistakes like that at this point in the game. The death timers are so long. Yeah. You really cost your team a lot. He, he got pure kill two in the end. You wounded it there. You made the the wound move. Yeah, he did make the wound move. That was a that was a classic CJ wound maneuver right there. The arcane shift forward into death. There was just, there was just no reason for it. That GP is stacked. Man, has the guardian angel now. Someday is absolutely terrifying, and he has a. Uh, well more than uh, Flame Horizon Flame at this point. Look at that, 150 CS ahead. That's a scary GP. He doesn't even need that money anymore. He has actually sold his boots for a GA. <laughs> yeah. Good luck killing this GP. Wow. That is an enormous amount of CS for about 45 minutes in the game to have 525 CS. It's disgusting, isn't it? That is incredible. But it also shows that Longju was not being proactive enough when it came to diving turrets with their composition. Yeah. Remember, they could have. They have They have Lamb's Respite. They have a lot of hard engage. They have Alistair Ultimate. They have Lissandra Ultimate. They could have dove more actively, for sure. You know, now that KT does have that fourth dragon, we may see them just hold out and wait it for uh, a fifth dragon opportunity. Yeah, why not? Got Makes another sense. five minutes here or so until that dragon comes up. Two minutes now until the Baron. And their patience has really reaped a lot of rewards. Yeah. Long Zhu was like, all right, we're just going to push in. We're not going to use our two teleports. We're not going to dive you. Here's here's some farm, guys. Someday, would you like some farm? Would you like to get back into this game? Somebody's like, sure, I'll clear out these waves with my barrels. <laughs> Sounds great. I'd love some farm. Thank you. And then Long Zhu's like, how about we go aggressive at all the wrong times? Katie's like, okay, that sounds great too. And now they have a gold lead. Yeah. I mean, at this point, everybody's pretty much got the items that they're looking for. So, Longju is still powerful. I mean, there is still a <laughs> chance for them to win a team Remember, fight. Remember, but... Sunday started this game 0 4 and 1. Yeah. He is now 5,000 gold up on Flay. 5,000. I have no explanation, except for. Longju gave him a lot of gold. Gave him Certainly a lot of fun. did. Chani now also with the Zeeks. Helping out even more, you know? A mortal reminder for Fury as well. Mortal I'd rather, reminders. Everybody is reminded of their own mortality. I'd here. much rather get Lord Dominic's regards than a mortal reminder. It's a bit... It, I understand it, I think, a bit more from Longju's perspective because they are they don't really have a big tank besides that Elise. And, of course, when you get that lifesteal coming in, uh, it does make a, a big difference having those Grievous Wounds. Done. Oh, I, I just meant that I'd rather have a nice message from Lord Dominic than a reminder that I'm going to die someday. <laughs> but we can talk about it in game context, too. I suppose we should. <laughs> I'm glad you took that seriously. <laughs> I like the more the idea of a moral <laughs> reminder, though. It's like better set my mortality uh, alarm clock here, so I, <laughs> I, guess. I get reminded that I'm gonna die. What does the shopkeeper tell you when you buy it? You're like, I like one of those. He's like, I'll sell you this, but I want you to know you're gonna die someday. <laughs> you're like, oh wow, I, thanks for the mortal reminder, and he's like, no problem, man. 
All right, they're going to set up. This is Longshu's last attempt to win this game. They have a TP. They want this. Yep. It's KT. Cocoon on to pure. Lux gets a nice ult through the middle of all of it. Fly trying to back away now. Arrow in good position for some auto attacks. Longshu looking for the engage. Coco from behind. Arrow knocked right back on top of him by Poppy. Wow, that was dangerous. KT split up quite a bit, though. Coco on his own. Ults on Arrow. Big kill. Comes in for Longju. There's the Zonias. Can the rest of KT stop this one? Fly over the wall with more damage. Gets locked up for just a moment. Here comes Someday, though. It's really all about what this GP can do. Two for one in favor of Longju. Well, for Longju that fight. has to go defend their Nexus or their inhibitor at some point. Inhibitor just came back up for them. Yeah, it's going to start taking damage from the minions immediately, though. And KT can actually, weirdly enough, put a little bit of pressure on. They're going to back off now. But that was a that was a bizarre fight. I mean, we had Flame knocking. Uh, oh, they're actually going to save right the inhibitor. It looks like the super minion is distracted by caster minions. Oh. And uh, looks they'll, like they're going to get they'll it. Save it, yeah. Wow, this was so cool. So Coco is actually going to TP in onto a ward in the back. And as we see these two sides clashing, he knocks Whoa. Arrow back. And Arrow, Coco, tries to get on top of him, but he knows Arrow still has QSS. So it's a bit of a mind game right here. Eventually Man, does take him out. It's a lot of damage. And then Zonia's, but of course, with Someday coming into the fight, there's just so much GP damage. And here we go again. Someday has his TP. Score and Arrow are not up yet. Fly's got a chance to steal it with that Lux laser, I guess. They have to fight this. They certainly do. They're going to try to steal low. it with GP barrels. Ooh. Oh, he's going to get it. Not quite. That was close. But Chaser secures the Baron for Longju. It's a good attempt. But now Longju has the Baron. Coco already pushing the mid lane. Guess what? Dragon 5 in a minute and a half, though. This has become a nail biter. I know. This one's about as close as it gets. KT just needs to hold off. And if they get any sort of edge in the next minute or two, they can go down, take that fifth dragon, and then suddenly Longju with an inhibitor missing in the mid lane has a, a bit of a mortal reminder that their base is pretty vulnerable. Arrow has decided on distortion enchantments, so he has that flash more often. Same thing with score. Probably a good idea. Meanwhile, Fury does have that arcane shift, so he's not so reliant on the flash, taking the alacrity enchantment instead. Yep. This has turned into the kind of game you expect from this series. Just uh, pretty close, very back and forth. Well, Longshu probably should have won this one. <laughs> Realistically, they, they they opened the door for KT to come back in. And now they have two Barons. Can they close on this one? Again, it's so dangerous to engage into KT's composition. And, and the pressure has been eliminated. The wave clear is still there for KT. Yeah. There's nobody even with a Baron buff. Okay, so they're just going to let a free wave clear come in right here. I guess they're just going to play around Fifth Dragon. I think that's going to be Longju's plan with this Baron because they're certainly not empowering minions to take turrets. Seems to be. I mean, can you really count on having another fight like you did last time, though? That it was so weird. That arrow was knocked back right next to the Lissandra. That that type of scenario you just don't think you're going to see very often. Well, then it's just a mind game about that QSS, too. Pretty much, yeah. All right. As long as you're going for the dragon, and uh, KT's not going to be able to stop them. So fifth dragon prevented as long as you picks up their third. They don't put any pressure on. Nope. That's that's <laughs> the weird thing, is that they just let, they push in the minion waves, and then they let them be repulsed for a good part of this. Now, finally, they're trying to apply Baron Buffs. You see Coco just staying in range of the minion right there. So here's their push, but they don't have very good siege. They have an Ezreal to hit turrets, basically. We'll see what they can do. I mean, the other thing, too, is Achani, like we just saw, has that Trundle Pillar. He can make it really dangerous for even the Ezreal to try to come in and do damage to the turret. Yeah, and their best option is going to be a 1-3-1 one, one split push. So they send Poppy into the top side. Chani has to go up here. That's the support. Arrow finally joining him. But they're starting to chip away at these turrets. This is good from Longshu. Yeah. yeah very they nice. They're going to get the good one. Looks like they will at some point in the near future. Probably just with that cannon minion. One or two more hits will do it. And there we go. Yep. Okay, so Longshu does take the mid inhibitor turret. KT's inhibitor is vulnerable. Top lane getting a little bit low as well. KT needs to do something drastic here. Uh -oh. Something going in on to Coco. Coco alts the GP in trouble. There's the GP alt. Zonia's will it last long enough? No! Someday oh, he dies. gets the kill. That's right. Chaser now in trouble. Couldn't get the Lambs respite off in time. That's two kills for KT. 
And those are some long death timers. Meanwhile, Flame does the right thing, takes down the top inhibitor turret. That was that so close. Chaser flashed to get his ult down, but it was just a little bit too late. The timing on the barrel kill from Someday was just perfect. I mean, he had GP ult going too. It was, it was a close call. But now what can KT do with this 3v2 right now? And the mistake there from Coco was trying to use the ult on the GP. You don't yeah. do that. You ult yourself because that way he only had Zonia's left and he couldn't buy enough time to actually get the rest of his team there to help him. Pretty much. Do KT. not ult that GP. Immediately pushing forward for that inhibitor. Someday can join them any time with that teleport. I, can I'm, they finish? I'm a little bit surprised that he's not TPing down there right now. To he is. Make that happen. Okay, there we go. A little bit late. Wanted to go back, make sure he was all healthy. KT trying to make this one a 2-0. Longju's going to be stuck in the middle of the pack if they can. Pure going in with a big engage flame right there, but there's just not a lot of damage with Coco and Chaser down. They take out the That's second Nexus turret, and that is it. KT will secure the 2-0. Nail-biting finish, but KT takes it. They secure their third place spot in the league, and Longju languishing in the middle of the pack there. Trundle canceled the poppy ult at the end there. Not bad. Too. Nicely done by Hachani. Yeah. So KT, wow, they bounce back so well. Certainly Longju, I think, dropped the ball on closing that game out after their very strong early game. But KT, they just turtled up, played defensively. And Coco, oh man, I cannot believe he opened oh. GP instead of himself. That one moment of indecisiveness. Oh, it was <laughs> so <laughs> close. So we're looking at it right now, that Lamb's yeah. respite. That could have changed absolutely everything. Uh, at the end of the day, it is a 2-0 for KT Rolster. Coco's birthday is ruined, <laughs> but Longju is still a, a decent team, still a good team. They've got a chance to come back, got a chance to experiment a little bit more with those uh, compositions. But again, you know, we are in the second phase of the tournament now. The wins start to count a lot more from here on out. Actually, they count exactly the same amount, Doa. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> you have less of an opportunity to come back. That's There's true. less season to play with from here on out. That's true, and Longju. So Played that second game pretty well over the course of things, but just a couple Let's of errors. Yeah, we're to watch this again. So barrel, barrel, about half his HP, and then no, you don't ult the GP. He has Sterix, or he has Bob Malmortius right there, and then look at that. Oh. Look at that timing from someday though. So close. Perfect. Absolutely flawless. To nail it right after he comes out of Zonia's. Yeah. Wow. And that is it. A split second deciding the game in favor of KT. Amazing. Well, hopefully we'll get some fun games up next, too. Of course, oh, the Rocks Tigers going up against Samsung. Should be another good series. It's the Rocks Tigers, man. You always see fun games, no matter it's what the matchup true. is. I love watching the Rocks Tigers play. They're my favorite team to watch in a very, very long time. But we'll see who the MVPs are for KT when we come back. A winner's interview with them, and then after that, a best of three between Samsung and the Rocks Tigers. Difficult loss for Longshu for sure. Again, you know, in that game too, they really had it. Gave it away. Great play by Sunday though. Yep. Overcoming his 0-4-1 score to go up by 5,000 gold over Flame. It, you know, in the end Farm it was- Farm his heart out. It wasn't a lot. Small things that make the difference. When we come back, guys, don't miss it. Samsung versus Rocks Tigers here on Champion Spring. We'll be right back after this.